What other headwinds have you faced in this entire process? Look, when we started started up this business, raising capital was tough. Yeah. Um, raising capital for a European-based or North American-based mining company is, is hard enough. But then when you tell investors in London yeah. and in Europe that you're actually focused here in, in Africa, mm -hmm. again, that pool of capital diminishes very, very quickly. Oh. Um, we were able to attract uh, a very significant supporter of our business, mm -hmm. uh, one of South Africa's most successful mining entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. uh, self-made billionaire, mm -hmm. um, uh, a guy by the name of Quinton Vanderberg, mm -hmm. who runs a, a, a mining investment mining company out of South Africa called Q Global Commodities. Yeah. He invested significantly in us mm -hmm. early on mm -hmm. and has done obviously exceptionally well yeah. in terms of how his investment is now valued given the share price appreciation. Yeah. So we were able very early on to secure the necessary funding to develop our first few mining projects. Mm -hmm. Going forward for us, our focus is on using our cash flow, mm -hmm. using the profits out of our operation to invest back into our business. Mm -hmm. It's that organic growth there. Um, that is how we will continue to grow, to mm -hmm. expand and identify new new project opportunities, new mines. Okay. Saying that, we, we also, we want to align our partners in these new mines. Mm -hmm. So when we do acquisitions, as part of the consideration, we issue them shares in our company. Okay. You know, we want them to benefit from the from the growth in our company, mm -hmm. the appreciation of that share mm -hmm. share price, mm -hmm. um, and also to be very much aligned with us. That's the key thing in all our activities here yeah. is having well aligned shareholders, investors, partners. Um, to make sure that we're all going in the same direction is yeah. critical when we operate in these, these countries. Absolutely. When you look at the net effect that comes around your industry, um, assuming you go to a place like, let's say, Quale, and you have identified some um, mm. you know, good products there they could mine, it has a net effect on even the communities around there uh, in terms of employment and all that. Um, and I'm just, you know, just to endear the people, because sometimes we've had people who associate mining to you know, some bad signs of it. They would say the environment will be degraded, all those kind of things. Uh, what would be your assurance to even the communities, because as you said, you're still in the exploring stages where you're identifying new mines and all that. What would be the message to the people who are gonna see your faces soon enough coming there exploring? Yeah. Yeah. I think, look at our track record already, which we've demonstrated in South okay. Africa, mm -hmm. where within a very short period of time, mm -hmm. we've got a mine into operation. Yeah. Um, typically getting a mine into operation could be anything from five to ten years. Yeah. We got a mine into operation within 12 months. Mm. Uh, that mine is one of the sole employers in that area. It's in the northern Cape of South Africa. Mm. Uh, an area of massive unemployment. Okay. Um, and a number of other social issues. Mm -hmm. we've, got we've got involved there. We've developed our mine. Mm -hmm. All our employees are from that region. Mm -hmm. From the neighboring towns. Yeah. Um, so we have a clear policy, a very clear stated policy to work within the, the, the communities okay. that surround and are impacted by our operations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, 24 months ago, yeah. Marula had barely half a dozen employees. Mm. Okay, we're now sitting on the back of what we're doing in South Africa, Tanzania, mm. yeah. Zambia, and, mm -hmm. and here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's probably between 150 and 175. Yeah. All of them, coming from the local communities that we operate in. Mm. Um, even here in the head office yeah. in, uh, in Nairobi, mm -hmm. we've got 15 people, mm -hmm. all of which are, are Kenyan nationals. They're yeah. working here, and yeah. all of whom, uh, very few had any experience in the mining sector. Mm -hmm. People that we've now brought in, we're providing the opportunity to grow, to learn, um, to, to, to better themselves, to get better experience in our industry. So when we go into the communities, be it here in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Zambia, Throughout yeah. Eastern Southern Africa, yeah, you know, we engage from the outset, mm -hmm. and we provide those employment opportunities. We don't bring in expats. Yeah, you know, that's not the way to grow a successful business. Okay. Yeah, you know, and that's why we're listing here mm -hmm. in, in Nairobi. It's demonstrating our commitment to all our stakeholders. Okay. There's no point us having shareholders in London who are benefiting from the growth and, and uh, value that's oh. being generated in our company. Mm -hmm. We want everybody here in Australia to be able to benefit and participate mm -hmm. in, in what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as we come to a close of this conversation, what's in your crystal ball? The next four, five years, or even 10, what are you looking at? 
Look, we see Marua as being as being one of the largest, most profitable, mm -hmm. most successful mining companies that's focused on these battery mm -hmm. critical metals. Yeah. And we've taken a very aggressive approach over the past two years in growing our business. Okay. That aggressive, dynamic approach is going to continue. Mm -hmm. You know, already we've started off 2024, we've completed two transactions in South Africa. Yeah. We are hoping to complete another two here in Kenya over the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we will continue to grow this business mm -hmm. uh, and each time we complete a new acquisition or develop a new mine, we're looking at you know, getting that value into the company. There's no point doing an acquisition or, or growing your business if it's not adding value, yeah. if it's not generating additional profits or revenue earnings, if it's not creating a, a, a share price that's appreciating in value. Mm -hmm. So going forward, in, not just in 2024, but for the, for the rest of this decade, mm -hmm. I see us really becoming a major player uh, here in East Africa in particular, yeah. and, and throughout Southern Africa as well. Wow. You know, I know this will be sort of like giving some um, tidbits to your competitors and all those. I'm sure where you sit, you see a lot of untapped opportunities. <laughs> Look, there are, it's, it's been tough for the past 12 months because you've, you've seen them. Yeah. And it's, it's now about delivering, about securing them. And you know you don't just complete or secure these opportunities overnight. Absolutely, you have to do the work. You have to do the due diligence, get the lawyers and advisors involved. But we've put a lot of hard work in over the past twelve months, and I think yeah, there's tremendous opportunities here, mm -hmm. in particular in Kenya, in a sector yeah. where there hasn't been the focus mm -hmm. for an awful long time. Okay, and that to me is is why we're here in Nairobi. Yeah, because I'd like to see us emerge as one of Kenya's most significant mining companies mm. and we will be blowing the trumpet from the highest mountain to say how good it is to operate here wow congratulations and we look forward to you ringing the bell <laughs> thank you very much thank you <laughs> thank you so Cheers. much jason. pleasure there you have it that's jason brewer the ceo of arula mining very optimistic that hey soon enough in a couple of weeks we're ringing the bell and there will be room for you even as investors as well to really ride along into this mining sector and we are so proud of them as well uh, going to the journey of being the first mining company listed at the Arab Securities Exchange. Thank you so much for your time. I leave you now with the markets.